Hi, my name is Dan Addy, Engineering and Technical Sales for Detroit Speed. And now that we have the DSC subframe connectors installed in our third gen Camaro, DSC fabricator Mark McDonald and myself are going to show you how to install the DSC quadrant link into the third generation Camaro. Mark has already cut out the provided four cut template and to position it on the rear trunk pan. The top flange of the template should be 8 and 5 eighths from the edge of the trunk surface. The inboard cut line of the hole should be six and a half inches when measuring straight over to the inner quarter or the wheel tub brace. So as you can see, Mark is positioning the template where he made the scribe marks of those two measurements. Once Mark has the template taped in position, then he can mark with a scriber or a sharpie on where he's going to cut the hole. Now that Mark has the cut hole template scribed, he can remove the template and cut the hole using a cutoff wheel. Now before you start cutting the rear trunk pan, if your brake line bracket is in the way, we recommend that you remove it as Mark is doing right now. Now that Mark's got the hole cut out, you can see that the hole is a little bit to the inside of the inner frame rail. So Mark will grind this area up closer to the inner frame rail so we can put in the upper link pocket. So Mark's got the upper link pocket in position. As you can see on some of the later third gen Camaros like 90, 91, 92 have an extra little rib on the rear trunk pan. So Mark's gonna mark that and cut it out so it fits nice and flat against the trunk pan. There's also a little rib along the bottom edge there that he'll need to flatten a little bit just to get that doubler plate flat against the floor. Now that Mark's got the upper link pocket sitting flat against the floor, he's going to trace the perimeter of the bracket. That way when it's removed he can grind the, the paint away for a nice clean weld. Now that Mark's got the floor pan all ground away clean for the welding, he's going to put the bracket back in place just to verify fitment. So now what he'll do is take a couple screws just to position the bracket to the floor and then we'll check for the flange fitment on the underneath side of the disc.
Just remember before you do put the screws in, make sure that 8 and 5 8 measurement is the same from the top of the trunk pan to the top side of the bracket. Take a couple different locations to make sure it's straight and square to the vehicle. Okay, from the underside of the vehicle, the plate should also be pushed outboard against the frame rail. This will set the appropriate span. When viewing from the bottom, the flange that hangs through the floor will not contact the entire length of the frame rail due to the angle of the frame. So Mark is going to then line up the double plate so he can make a mark on where to grind away all the paint to give yourself a nice clean plug weld. Okay, now that Mark's got the double plate fitting tight against a floor pan, he's going to go ahead and tack weld some of the holes. You can also plug weld the remaining holes and then stitch weld around the perimeter of the doubler. Now you may need to hammer the plate to fit tightly against the vehicle on some areas due to sheet metal variations in original vehicles. Once you have a few plug welds in place, remove the remaining self-tapping screws and finish well the upper link pocket for the vehicle. Now that Mark has the upper link pocket in place and welded to the vehicle, we'll take the lower reinforcement, put it in the correct location, and scribe around it. That way, Mark can grind away the paint so we can have a nice clean weld on the lower reinforcement plate. Mark's going to reposition the lower plate back in the correct location and tack weld it in place. He'll also plug weld a few holes to make sure it doesn't move and then tack weld around the perimeter of the lower double plate to the vehicle. Fit the upper link body mount inner brace and the tunnel doubler plate to the vehicle. The inner brace should be located tightly against the upper link body mount, allowing the tunnel doubler plate to slide between the tunnel and the inner brace. Due to vehicle variation, you may have to grind the inboard side of the inner brace to fit against the tunnel area. The mark will scribe around these tunnel braces so that you can remove them and grind away the paint for a nice clean weld. With the tunnel doubler welded to the vehicle, Mark will now install the inner brace. He'll tack weld it in place, then using the pre-drilled plug weld holes, plug weld the vehicle, and then stitch weld around the other areas of the inner brace.
Position the outer brace tightly against the upper link mount and line the plug weld tabs so they line up with the inner brace. Pack weld the outer brace of the vehicle and then stitch weld around the perimeter. Mark has now moved to the underside of the vehicle where he will plug weld the doubler and then move over to the flange that's clamped together. He'll tack weld that and completely weld that closed and then also weld the slot closed that allows that flange to move to be clamped to the frame rail. Now that Mark's got the double plate all welded to the vehicle, he's just going to grind for a clean, smooth finish. Now that Mark's got the upper link body mount welded in place, we'll move over to the passenger side. It's pretty well going to be the same process, and you can actually use the same template, just flip it over for the passenger side. Mark's already got the pocket laid out, so he's going to start cutting the hole and getting the upper body mount link pocket installed.